Hello friends. So once again, welcome to my channel. So last video we have seen how one ALU operation is performed. Basically here we are writing the here we are writing the sequence of control signals that we need to generate whenever we are executing an instruction. So next today we'll see how one instruction is executed. So here the whole journey will be covered. That means bringing the instruction from the memory which was pointed by PC, then getting it into IR, decoding it, and then we need to execute. As part of your execution, sometime your operand may be there in memory. That also we need to get. Then you need to perform the operation, and then the result may need to store into memory. So whole, the whole thing we are going to cover in this video. So execution of a complete instruction. So whenever we will do it, we are going to use our single bus CPU organization, right? So this diagram is already clear to us. And one more thing I forgot to mention in my previous videos that this registers, this ALU and this set of interconnections together is termed as data path, right? Data path. And now we'll see one complete instruction execution. So suppose my instruction is this one add within bracket r3 comma r1 so when we see the instruction we should be able to understand what it is telling because we have seen so many instructions so many addressing modes so our this concept is by now this clear what this instruction is asking me to do is uh, that there is something in memory whose address is in register r3 with that content i will add the content of r1 and then will store the result into r1 so what this instruction is asking me to do is that part clear it is telling me to perform a add operation where is my operand in r1 and another one is in your uh, memory and which memory location that content of r3 content of r3 is having some memory location at that memory location my data is there so both of them i will add and i'll put the result in r1 this much I need to do as part of execution. So see, first what I have to do, because here I'm going to cover the whole story. So first I need to fetch the instruction from memory. So fetching, you know, what are the steps? First I'll fetch the instruction. And then what I will do after fetching, my instructions will be, my instruction will be decoded. Because once I fetch, instruction will be in IR. If it is in IR, that means it is decoded. So I got to know that one of my operand is in uh, memory so i need to get it fetch the first operand this operand the contents of the memory location pointed to by r3 from the memory so this part is similar to my fetching a word from memory this is also fetching a word from memory but this is instruction this is your operand then perform the addition this is what alu operation and then transfer the result into r1 so store the result result into r1 so whatever basic operations we have seen, those only we are going to use while executing a complete instruction, starting from getting it from memory, decoding, executing, everything. So these four steps we are going to follow. So first, let's start with fetch the instruction, right? So who is pointing to the instruction? The instruction that I want to execute, where I will get the address of that instruction in PC. And who can point to memory? MAR. So PC's content, we need to give it to MAR. So see, this we are going to do. So first part is fetch. So while fetch, that means give the address into MAR, then generate the read signal. So PC out. So PC's content will be there on the bus. Then from the bus, it will be taken to MAR in. That means it is connected to the address bus, connected to my memory chip. This side, my memory is there. So it is connected to the memory chip. Address is given. After giving the address, what we used to do? Give the read signal. So read signal. This much we have done. So see, after giving the read signal, in the next clock pulse, we are going to uh, give the WMFC. So whenever we are going to give WMFC, after that, we cannot perform any operation. So what we will do, whatever is possible to do, without my uh, instruction coming from memory we will continue with that in our layman's life also uh, suppose we are waiting for someone then till the person comes 
we used to do something over our mobile that means whatever we can do without the person has arrived we will continue with that so here also uh, before the instruction comes from memory whatever is possible to do that we will do so what is possible here we can increment the value of pc because pc was pointing to this instruction after this instruction is over by default my sequence of execution says sequential so i will be moving to the next instruction so pc's content has to be updated by what amount we used to update here our assumption is that length of each instruction is equal that is 4 bytes and the machine is byte addressable so whatever was the address of this instruction next instruction will be at x plus 4 so that x was there in pc with that we need to add 4 so see right now the content of pc is there on the bus you know that and that is also connected to the b input of the alu so input is input of alu one of the input is available here what is the next input we require pc plus 4 na? so 4 we need not have to bring from somewhere it is already hardwired so this 4 only we need to select from the multiplexer and then it will be available at the a input of the alu so simply we will write select 4 so by select 4 this 4 will come to the alu input so see here both the inputs are available in front of your alu so now alu to the alu we can tell to perform your add operation because this signal is given to the alu read signal was given to the memory we can uh, uh, give those both the signals in the same clock cycle so add once we have given add then by the end of the clock cycle result will be re ready and that we will take into our Z register so Z in what I have done here whenever we have given the address into MAR and we have told the memory to read by the time memory will complete its read operation in the meantime we are incrementing the value of PC and due to that this 4 was hardwired we need not have to take it from somewhere if it was coming from somewhere then in the same clock pulse we will not be able to do so because already PC is there on the bus then that from somewhere via Y register only the value can come so due to that to make the operation faster it was hardwired now from Z register the content has to go to what PC because PC is incremented Z out PC in that we have done along with that we are doing Y in at this point simply you understand that the incremented value of PC is also stored in Y register but why I am doing it I'll come to it very shortly in my subsequent videos I'll be telling why this Y in is done here but right now uh, I, do, I don't want to deviate from the main topic so I'm just telling you that the updated value of PC is given to the Y register also but there is a benefit of it that I will discuss in my subsequent videos done now see PC is incremented you have given the read signal already so now you cannot do anything more before your instruction arrives from memory so what you will do WMFC now you are waiting whenever I am waiting I am doing nothing I am simply waiting for the MFC signal to come from memory so all these are done in one clock cycle I cannot do it here I cannot do these things here because the value updated value should come here so if i cannot do it here that means i cannot do this also there and wmfc cannot be also written there so this was in the next step and this is uh, for this step the length of this step is one clock cycle but for this step the length may not be one clock cycle because it depends on when memory is going to give me mfc next i have come out of wmfc that means the data is there in MDR. So now whatever has come into MDR is nothing but your instruction because you have given something into MAR is, is from PC. So and I know that PC can only point to instruction. So now whatever has come in MDR that has to be redirected to IR because instruction can be given to IR only whatever I have read as a combination of 1 and 0 into my MDR that will be given to IR only when MAR was loaded with the content of PC so this part is equivalent to fetching an instruction as well as decoding the first three steps 
are equivalent to what fetching the instruction we got the instruction from memory and we have also decoded then we got to know that another operand is in memory that also we need to get from memory so we'll start that process now so now from step 4 i'm starting with the execution part so in the execution part what i am supposed to do get something from memory whose address is in register r3 so r3 out whom i need to give mar then read signal right this i have done can i do here r1 out y in because another input to the alu is r1 can i give it to the y register here no i cannot do so because two outs are not possible in the same clock cycle please do remember this the next clock cycle only i'll start r1 out so r1's content will be placed on the bus now from r1 it will be given to y register so y register is holding one of my input another input will come from memory then only i can start my alu operation so now what i have to do i have given read signal to the memory now i have to wait for memory to complete the operation so wmfc before wmfc whatever is possible to do we will do that and then only wmfc next step coming to next step what does it mean data is there in mdr so now from mdr whether you are going to put it in ir no not at all why because mar was not loaded by pc rather it was loaded by content of r3 so mdr out will do that content mdr out means the data is on the bus that means it is in the b input and where is your other input in y register hope you remember how to perform an alu operation one input i have given on the b input another input is in y so i need to select it to come to a input so select y so that r1's content will come here then now i can give add signal we have given add signal by the end of the clock cycle result will be ready that we will move to z register so z in this signal will work by the end of the clock cycle and by the end of the clock cycle results will be ready done now can i write here z out no why because two out operation i cannot do in the same clock cycle so after doing this operation where i need to take my result i need to take my result to register r1 see this is my destination right now where is the result of addition in z register so in the next step what i will write z out done after that where i need to take it to r1 so r1 in so this part will complete the instruction and once one instruction is over at the end we generate one signal that is called as end so end indicates end of this particular instruction it is not ending your program and is indicating end of this particular instruction what is the implication of this signal generation i will tell you very shortly so whatever we have written here what we need to understand is why the next step is coming why not in the same step i am writing the things why not i am writing the generating the signals in the previous step also that i need to understand and what are the signals required that you need to understand so point is what are the signals required and in which clock cycle i should generate the signal that you need to understand if that understanding is proper then it is very simple another point always remember never do two register out in the same clock cycle because it is a single bus two data if they present simultaneously on the bus it will produce a garbage only so hope this part is understood and why and only when mar is loaded with pc that time only whatever comes in mdr will be given to ir otherwise not another is uh, for alu operation one of the input is given to y register and the next input is applied directly on b input in the subsequent clock cycle only and then y register is selected and then the signal is given to perform the operation maybe add sub or whatever you want to perform and then result will subsequently be stored at the destination so this is all about for uh, the control signals required for executing a complete instruction hope you are getting from my explanations thank you and please 
If you are getting from my explanations, then like my videos and subscribe to